Well, as my colleague Vinaya was pointing out, while officials on the ground have enough reason to believe that these were abandoned vessels, the ATS hasn't ruled out a terror angle completely because of the arms and ammunition that was found on those vessels as well. In a situation like this, what is the protocol that follows? You're asking me. Shashi Gandhi, yes, that's for you. You're asking me, ma'am. Hello? Yes, yes, that's for you. Hello? You asking me, ma'am? Yes, Shashi Gandhi, please go ahead. We can I'm hear you. Voice. Hello? Okay, you know, we'll just try and re-establish that connection with uh, Shashi Khan. But Patikrit, let me take that same question to you as well. While officials on the ground have reason to believe that, yes, they were distress calls that were made, these are abandoned vessels, nobody can take away from the fact that there was arms and ammunition that was found on these vessels as well. And of course, a lot of comparisons were made to what we had seen during 2611 as well. Uh, yes, uh, Ridhima, you know, it's like once bitten, twice shy. We have faced Absolutely. similar situations. And similar route was used both for the 93 blast when the consignment of RTX came in and in 2008 as well. So I think uh, under the Arms Act, a different kind of actions will definitely be taken. The officials from those organizations will be asked to come in India, depose in India, and, you know, there will be some kind of questioning that will be done. And I think uh, I just want, I, I want to ask and wonder, as to whether the, those, uh, you know, if it is, if it can get drifted like this, why is it that there is no GPS enabled system inside mm. it or an RFI enabled system like this? I mean, it could have reached wrong hands. It could have reached wrong hands. It could have been used then on Indians, even if that organization may have, may or may not have had any. So how uh, was know, this not intercepted? It, yes. Before it actually could have unfortunately reached wrong hands. But I believe Shashikant is now back with us. Essentially, what I was trying to understand, because the ATS hasn't ruled out a terror angle as of now, what is the protocol that follows in situations like these? Yeah, I'll just uh, say a couple of things. I'm speaking as a former top intelligence man, as, as also the a former cop, right? I was in Indian uh, space, whether it's territory, whether it's air, whether it's uh, 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 coastal, this thing, they have been, people have been trying to get in. I'll just say right from 95 when Purulia had happened. In the recent years, 2013, 2022, before that 2008, attempt was made to bring in certain arms and ammunition to connect to the new territory. I'd agree with the gentleman who was speaking before me. Yes, so uh, they are trying to push in arms and ammunition even through Afghanistan. And this morning only in uh, Jammu and Kashmir border, lots of arms and ammunition and explosive was dropped right from the international border. So taking this particular thing into perspective, I'll say that I'm not a sort of a conspiracy theorist, but we have to be careful Number one, if, if it it was attached to a yacht, I don't know if a yacht which carries uh, AK-47 rifles and ammunition, etc., etc. Okay, they were Omanis. Yes, they were. They said they were rescued, but why they were trying to get this arm and ammunition into Oman? Not permitted. No, none of the Gulf countries were permitted. Like the gentleman before me spoke about GPS on all those things. None of them there. And again, the boat drifted right from Oman or Dubai, from, from where it started and gets into Indian territorial waters. And we have exclusive right on our territorial waters, whether it is your uh, territorial maritime zone, immediate one, or the exclusive uh, uh, maritime zone, or we have a 7,000 of uh, kilometers of maritime border with seven countries. I'm surprised why it could not be spotted okay. and more important that the boat didn't have anything to identify no papers no nothing no gps it, to me it sounds like a conspiracy to send in arms maybe a limited number maybe those guys wanted to come into india again but again like i said i'm not a conspiracy theorist but again i'll say yes all the agencies have looked into this aspect this thing very carefully and in full details thank okay. you okay okay Pertinent questions that you're raising, Shashikant. I want to quickly go back to my colleague, Vinaya, who continues to be with us. Vinaya, the reason the ATS is not ruling out a terror angle is because of the recovery of the arms and ammunition, as many as three AK-47s and about 10 bullets. Till the time the investigation is over and a terror angle can be ruled out, what about the security arrangements on the ground? How are they being beefed up in and around the areas? 
Well, the security arrangements have been completely beefed up, let me tell you, Vidhima, because it's not just in uh, Raigad where the boat was found, but also in neighboring areas, made by Ratnagiri, made by other areas. In fact, even in Mumbai, security has been beefed up. So we have seen that nakabandis have been put in place at several locations across the Goa-Mumbai highway, which is the connecting highway. Uh, you know, of course, one cannot uh, help but remember the dastardly 1993 terror attacks uh, during that time as well, the ammunition had come from uh, the sea route uh, to uh, Konkan, that is in Raigad district, uh, Hari Hareshwar, if I'm not wrong, from where it was transported by road. Uh, so the security uh, agencies are trying to make sure that there is no untoward incident that happens. While right now, uh, you know, there is no terror angle that has been reported. And we have reported exclusively on this. We have accessed the travel details of the yacht to Raigad, uh, where we have been able to ascertain that Neptune Maritime Security has already confirmed the serial numbers of the missing AK uh, weapons which have been found on the yacht. So as of now, though the agencies have maintained that there's no reason to panic and there's absolutely no terror angle that can be seen as of now, there are several facets with respect uh, to the safety uh, and security per considering the proximity to Mumbai as well. Uh, and that is why we see that uh, security arrangements have been put in place at several places. Mumbai already on high alert. In fact, you know, we saw soon after this alert came in, the police commissioner of Mumbai, uh, Vivek Fansarkar, uh, reached the assembly in no time, held a closed-door meeting with the deputy chief minister of Maharashtra, uh, who's also the home minister, briefed him about the entire situation. So in some sense, we can see the alertness within the system here that uh, though the terror angle has right now been denied, it still is taking all the precautions to make sure that, uh, you know, at a time when festivities are to occur here in Maharashtra, particularly in Mumbai, there should be no security hazard. Back to you. Okay, Vinaya, we request to stay on with us. I quickly want to go back to Patikrit. Patikrit, taking on from what Vinaya is pointing out, that considering the fact the security agency now has confirmed the serial numbers of all these missing weapons, that's why many officials on the ground are possibly now ruling out a terror angle. But till the time the investigation is complete, we cannot be sure of anything. What are the red flags that still remain for you? Oh, I think the first red flag, number one, is this, that why would somebody, even if it's a consignment, why would somebody you know, transport a consignment of merely three AK-47s? And where was it getting transported? For who was the consignee? Who actually gave the co contract? So these are the things. Are they going to some private hands or some True. military? If it's a military, then they would certainly not transport it through a yacht. That's a very, very big question. And as Mr. Shashikant also mentioned, that something drifting from the you know, Gulf of Oman to India is something very, very difficult to actually uh, you know, believe. Secondly, if, if say, uh, Pakistan wants to repeat something, God forbid, something mm. similar to 2611, they would certainly not use fishermen boat once again because mm. all the fishermen boats of Indian origin today have transponders. You can actually track and identify them if there is some kind of a wrong activity happening. So they would certainly try to use the technology. You know, like remotely piloted uh, unmanned vehicles like this or unmanned boats like this. So this whole story for the time being, if, if, because there is a name of an organization which is coming up, which is Neptune Man Maritime, uh, you know, at least for the, time, some, for the time being, there is a sigh of relief. But okay. if something can drift like this, that's a very big issue and challenge for India. And secondly, who is the actual person dealing or organization dealing with Correct. Neptune security? And that's, that's why we...